Hello everyone, welcome to week 5. I hope you enjoyed the week 4's lectures on divide and conquer paradigm. Divide and conquer is a very common and powerful strategy for solving complex problems, and you will continue to see its applications in the future. In this week, we'll show you two more example problems that can be solved using divide and conquer. Okay, so let's get started. In this first lecture, we will discuss another interesting computational geometry problem, the convex hull problem. We will learn a very smart design of a divide and conquer algorithm for this problem. What is a convex hull? Given a set of points in the plane, the convex hull of the points is the smallest convex polygon that includes all of the points. For instance, for this example graph here, its convex hull is this. So all the points in the set are either on the convex hull or in the convex hull. What is a convex polygon? A polygon is convex if it has no dents in it, or to be more formal, a polygon is convex if there are no points in the polygon such that the straight line between can go outside the polygon. For instance, this is convex, this is not convex, because if we draw a line between these two points, it goes outside of the convex hull. We can also visualize what the convex hull looks like by a thought experiment. Imagine that the points are nails sticking out of the plane. We can take an elastic rubber band, stretch it around the nails, and then just let it go. It will snap around the nails and assume a shape that minimizes its length. The area enclosed by this rubber band is called the convex hull of this set of nails or points. A more formal definition of convex hull is this. We denote the convex hull of a set Q of points as CH of Q. Each node in Q is identified by its X and Y coordinates. So first, what's the naive brute force algorithm for finding the convex hull of a set of points? We notice a property of all of the line segments connecting two points on the convex hull. For instance, if we extend this line section on the convex hull, we can see that all the other points of this set, they are on the same side of this line. So for another example, for this line here, if we extend it, as far as we need, we'll be able to see that all the points are located on one side of this line. This property will help us to come up with a brute force algorithm. So first we need to enumerate all possible lines that are connecting two points. So we have n points in this graph. So we'll have n times n minus one lines that connect two different points. Then we look at each line and see for the other n minus two points in this graph, are they on the same side of the extension of this particular line? If that's the case, we say this line is on the convex hull. So the overall complexity of this brute force algorithm is big O of n cubed. This is a polynomial time algorithm, so not bad at all. But for sure, we can do better than this. Before we try divide and conquer, let's first see a clever algorithm, Jarvis March algorithm, also known as gift wrapping or package wrapping algorithm. Intuitively, this algorithm simulates wrapping a piece of paper really tightly around a polygon. We can visualize a row of wrapping paper anchored at the leftmost point in the set. We can extend this paper upwards as far as the eye can see. 
we pull this paper to the right, keeping it tight until it hits a point and bends around. That will be the next point on the convex hull. We continue in this way around the exterior of the set of points until we come back to our original leftmost point. I think we can get the idea now. So how can we simulate this gift wrapping process and write an algorithm? First, we find the leftmost point. We draw a yellow vertical guideline going through the leftmost point. Then we check all the other points in the set and see which straight line from the starting point to the new point, all the other points, we check which line is the closest to the yellow vertical guideline. So we check the angle of this line, the angle of this one, next one, next one. So we need to actually check all the lines that connect the leftmost point with all the other points in the set. So it will be easy for us to tell that this line has the smallest angle. It's the closest to the yellow vertical line. So we know this point will be the next one on the convex hull. Once we have the first line segment of the hull, we continue the wrapping process from the point we just found using the previous line segment and its extension as the new reference line in color yellow again for comparing angles. Again, we compute angles from this green line to all the remaining points and we choose the one that is the closest to the reference line. So we check all those lines. We can draw a couple of more here. Right, and then we found this one has the smallest angle. So this would be the next point on the convex hull. For the second iteration and all future iterations, we actually need to include the starting point, the leftmost point, as one of the candidate points for selection because convex hull circles back to the starting point. Now let's turn to the question of efficiency. Here is the pseudocode of this algorithm. It starts with finding the leftmost point in Q, which will take big O of n time. To choose the second point of the convex hull, we need to compute n minus one angles, each of which can be computed in constant time. To choose the third point of the convex hull, we also need to compute n minus one angles because we need to have the first, the leftmost point as one of the candidates as well, and so on. So this would give us big O of n square complexity. So the overall complexity of Jarvis March algorithm is big O of n square. However, we can look at the complexity of this algorithm in a slightly more careful way. The algorithm stops as soon as it completes the convex hull when it goes back to the starting point. So the process of selecting the next point only happens h times. So this for loop only iterates h times, where h is the number of points on the convex hull. So instead of having a big O of n square complexity, the actual complexity is big O of n times h. You may now wonder, well, how much is this different from big O of n squared? Yes, it is still possible that every point in the set is on the convex hull, 
like this example here. So when h equals n, the complexity is back to big O of n squared. But if the convex hull is a simple polygon with relatively few sides, in other words, if most of the points in the set are inside the convex hull, like this example we see here, then h may be much smaller than n. So big O of n times h will be a lot more efficient than big O of n squared. It seems pretty plausible in real applications where we have a random collection of n points in the plane. Most of them are inside the convex hull. So Jarvis March is a quite efficient algorithm. What about divide and conquer? Can we come up with an efficient divide and conquer algorithm for this problem? The idea would be to divide the points into equal halves in each iteration and solve the smaller problems recursively. In order to partition the graph, we start by sorting all the points from left to right based on their x coordinates. This will take us big O of n log n time. Here we see the points divided into left and right halves. Then we can apply the same algorithm and split both halves further into two halves. For this example graph, now there are only three points on each side, and the convex hull of three points is just a triangle. So we can treat these as base cases and solve them directly. Now we need to combine these two convex holes into a bigger one. Essentially, what we need to do is to find two lines, one from the top and one from the bottom. We need to connect the top of the two convex holes as well as the bottom of the two convex holes. We can identify the two top points from both sides that'll be these two, and then just connect them. Similarly, we can identify the bottom points from both sides and then connect them. So this will help us to merge those two convex holes into one bigger one. And then we just need to walk around the original convex hole and see if an edge is actually inside the new convex hole, and then we can just remove them. So what's the complexity of this combined algorithm? Since we are identifying four points, connecting them, and walking along the original convex holes to move those inside edges, so overall this process takes linear time. This combined process works pretty well for this example, but not always the case. Here is a situation that can arise when we join the two tops. Here we see that the line joining the tops of the left side convex hull and the right side convex hull actually cuts off a point here. So it seems like joining the top and the bottom points from both sides does not always work. How can we fix this? Here is a more complete solution. In order to find the top line connecting the two convex holes, we start by connecting the rightmost point on the left side's convex hole and the leftmost point on the right side's convex hole. We connect these two points, and then we look at the angles from this line to the next line by going clockwise in the right chain. We check this angle, and in the left half, we look at the angle from this line to the next line by going counterclockwise. If either of these two angles is less than or equal to 
180 degrees. We say it is a bad angle. We mark it red here. And we need to shift that end of the line to the next point. When we shift a line to the next point, we again go clockwise for points on the right half and counterclockwise for points on the left side. So we shift a line to the next point here. And then we check again the two angles. For the right side, we go clockwise. For the left side, we go counterclockwise. Now both angles are good angles. They are greater than 180 degrees. So now we have found the top line that can connect the left and right convex holes. Next, we find the bottom line to connect the two convex holes from both sides of the dividing line. Again, we start with connecting the rightmost point on the left side and the leftmost point on the right side. We connect them first, and then we check their angles. Because now we're looking at the bottom line, so now we need to change the directions. For the right side, we will go counterclockwise. And for the left side, we'll go clockwise. We check this angle and this angle. So we have one bad angle here because it's less than 180 degree. So we need to move this line. Again, because this is on the right side, so we need to rotate this red line counterclockwise. So we will shift to the next point, the green point here. And again, we check the two angles. This is a good angle. Now this is a bad angle marked in red here. So we need to shift the end on the left hand side. Now we are connecting these two green points. Again, we check the two angles. This is a good one. This is also a good one. And this red line is the bottom line we were looking for that can connect the two convex holes. Back to the pseudocode of this complete recursive divide and conquer algorithm. We can write its recurrence relation like this. And we have seen this one many times now. We know its complexity is big O of n log n. Here is an exercise question from the textbook that you could take a look. Note that you are also encouraged to implement all the algorithms from the lectures in Python. When you try to implement an algorithm, you will get a better sense of how it works, and you will be able to notice more details. Okay, that will be all for this lecture. I will see you in the next one.